Uh, it felt amazing, um, especially just seeing the fan support out there tonight, um, which was really good to see. You know, I think that's one of the biggest obstacles that we have uh, as an organization is bringing the community into and, and watching us and, and supporting us. And um, fans showed up tonight, so we needed it. It was a, it was a big time. How would you describe the alley oop that they came through you? Um, man, that was an amazing play. It was tough, and it, it was um, it was huge coming out the gate, especially in the third quarter. And um, I think it really gave us a lot of momentum. And uh, there was a play where you kind of threw it off the backboard, then you got closed off by a defender. Do you are you gonna try to jump back? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it should have been a shooting foul. I don't know why they didn't call it, um, but it's okay. Coach is talking about the care factor and the disposition on defense. How do you assess how that was different tonight than game one? Well, I mean, we were much more physical. I think we had a lot of just nerves in that first game. I think um, a little just shell-shocked in our minds a little bit. I think we just weren't playing defense the way we should have. You know, giving up 143 points is embarrassing. And, um, you know, we all know that. And I think coming out tonight, playing against a team that was shorthanded, that really didn't have um, huge offensive firepower, obviously with Ja being out, you know, it's a new team over there, but, um, you know, we rose to the occasion. I think we did a great job of down the stretch, just making timely stops, and uh, it was huge for us. And Tyus Jones, seven assists, zero turnovers, and the coach was talking about how he was able to make reads on broken plays. How important was it to have him be the conductor that he was? I mean, incredibly huge. Um, you know, um, it was one point in time in the fourth quarter that I screamed over across the court to the bench, like, yo, bring him back in the game. Um, just because he just is very calm. And uh, I'd much rather have him have the ball than me have the ball. Just put me in scoring position instead of handling the ball. So um, it was great. Obviously, he's a huge, um, you know, domino for us. And seven assists, zero turnovers. That's just what he's done his entire life. In terms of bringing fans back to the arena, how important was it to have a much better effort coming in after the whistle? I mean, huge, a huge, especially after the opener. And, um, you know, it's new times in D.C. It's a new era. Um, obviously, having a new front office, new phases around. And, you know, one thing that we're going to do is we're going to compete every night. You know, we're not going to hold our heads down and, and just give in. And, um, you know, I think that's what we kind of did over the past two years a little bit, um, just as a collective unit. And, um, you know, we're just going to fight. We're going to fight. It's not going to be perfect. Um, you know, it's going to be tough every night for us, so. You're not wanting to shy away from these big shots. How much easier has that been done this year than what it used to be? I mean, I just, I don't never play for percentages. I just, I'm always confident. Um, I think, you know, I didn't shoot the ball well, and I figured it out at the end, hit a big fadeaway, um, crashed the glass. Like, you know, my, my I, I just, I don't really think about, you know, missing shots. I think more so about attacking every possession, you know, especially because I'm a rhythm player. And if I hit one or two, I might, that might be five, six, seven. So, um, I'm always confident. I'm always in attack mode, and uh, I take the same shots. So, um, you know, they're gonna fall eventually. So. Uh, a little more of an emphasis. I think um, you know it's tough to get rebounds when you have you you allow a team like Indiana to shoot almost seventy percent from the field, and um, no, I think we got a lot of stops, and um, I, I definitely just made a more effort. You know, two rebounds is unacceptable for me. So, how would you say the chemistry? Um, it's it's a work in progress every game because we're just trying to figure out you know where we're going to be at on the court. You know, systematically. You know, sometimes I'm in the post and running split actions for him. Um, but I think there's a lot of just untapped things we haven't done yet, you know, whether that's me being a pick and roll handler, him slipping out, him going short roll or me, you know, being the, the roller popper. So, 
it's a it's a it's a work in progress you know it's only been two months and really not even two months if you think about it but um off the court uh i love him he's a great dude we live down the street from each other so um you know we're always talking and communicating and trying to figure it out so I mean, it was huge because um, I couldn't hit the side of a barn tonight. And um, I think, um, you know, having a guy like him come in and he's been a proven NBA player, um, <clears throat> um, you know, shot maker, and uh, he rises to the occasion, doesn't shy away from shots. And they went down tonight and it was huge for us. And we needed everyone. And um, I mean, if he didn't get hot, you know, it probably would have been a much, much closer game. So. Thank you. A couple of minutes ago, Coach said that guys were, quote, pissed off after the game one loss, and that was a big motivating factor going into tonight. Can you just speak on that, about how playing pissed off can help the team perform better after that loss? I mean, I don't think we played pissed off. I think we were disappointed in just how we played. I mean, like I said, 140 points is unacceptable, and especially for us. We took a positive out of it, right? Because at the end of the day, we scored 120 points, and, like, that's winning you a lot of games in the NBA. So if we would have just, you know, took care of a couple of positions, you know, whether it was transition D, which really effed us up that game, um, we did a much better job this game with that. We did a much better job um, points in the paint. What was it like 30, 40 in the, in points in the paint tonight? You know, that was huge for us. So, um, yeah, we're just making progress. It's a long season. It's going to be a long season for us, and we just need to um, just stick with the process and trust. Just trust it. It, was, it felt like in the fourth quarter, especially the first five or so minutes of the fourth quarter, um, you're going a lot of back to the basket. Is that something that, especially in the mid post area, is that something that the defense is just giving you and you're reading off of, or is that an intentional thing? Uh, just being a little bit more intentional. Um, you know, I think Memphis did a great job of guarding me tonight. Um, I missed a lot of easy shots that I will make, um, just spot up threes. But in the first half, they did a great job of my drives. And um, I just wanted to slow it down a little bit, try to attack mismatches, just get smaller guys, play my back to the basket because I'm very comfortable and I work on it every single day. And, um, um, you know, the, the game comes, comes and goes and runs. So I, I knew if I just stayed aggressive, I eventually would have figured it out. Got a couple of rebounds, got a couple of putbacks, and then I'm back in the game. So, um, yeah. Um, defensively, it was a large part of the win tonight. But coming off a game where you gave up 143 to tonight, and it's something that, you know, over the course of the last couple of years, this team's had trouble being consistent defensively. Is, do, you, do you see in that locker room right now a team that can do this consistently on the defensive end this year? Well, uh, I don't know. I truly don't know. I mean, it's only been two games, and, like, I could sit up here and tell you that, but I don't know. I think the biggest thing for us is just sticking with the process and, like, just having um, just integrity and, like, passion and, like, like not allowing somebody just to easily drive past you or score on you. And I think if we think about that first, then, um, you know, we could talk about being consistent. But, um, you know, I think tonight was a great – Stepping stone for us, I think in the preseason within our practices, we've done a great job with our shell defense and, um, you know, just other nuances of defense. And we just need to have more and more carryover. So. Uh, it was spectacular. Uh, had a lot of a lot of good energy uh, in the building. Uh, we fed off that as a as a team. Uh, got a big win today against a really good team. Um, a lot of people came out, so it was a really good experience. Uh, what, what we asked Coos about the alley unit. Um, just what was your perspective on that play? Uh, I knew I was throwing it, throwing it the entire time. It was a two on one fast break. We got a really good steal. Tyus got it out right away to Denny, and Denny did a pass, no dribbles. It was a two on one. Um, I know Desmond was more athletic than Coos. Um, just tried to put it up by the rim, and he was able to get an one. Pretty big play. Just how important was it to bounce back from the opener and the way that you guys lost that game? Hmm. I mean, it's 82 of them, so you can't think about a loss or something that you got three days ago, three days prior. You got to focus on the next one, go to the drawing board, get better, execute how we did tonight. Um, like I said, with this one, same exact thing. We got another game on Monday.
Um, go to the drawing board, get better from it. You know, keep going. Assess the care factor and disposition on the defensive end tonight and how to be able to sustain that moving forward. What will that take? Experience, just time, reps, playing out there with um, a new group. Um, got a lot of different talented guys on the court. Finding ways to be cohesive, be natural, communicate. Um, it just comes with reps, experience. Uh, so we felt a little bit more comfortable than we did the first game. Um, next game we'll feel even more comfortable and we just gotta kinda you know, ride that train. And Ty Jones was very efficient with seven assists, zero turnovers. And yeah. coach was talking about how he was able to settle the offense down when plays broke down. How important was that to have his poise and composure in the middle of the game? Uh yes, yeah, huge. It'll be huge for us all season. I think that's a really good reason on why we acquired him. Um is because he's a true point guard. He knows how to get people in their sets. He knows who to call, what plays, at what time, when we need timeouts, when we don't, when we need to get up a shot, how long we got left for time management. So me and Cruz can just be extremely aggressive, open up the floor, whether that's driving, whether that's making shots. We got Corey who can run the perimeter, also be a really good cutter, and then Denny who can get up and down and transition with Gaff on the back side. So um, we had a really good lineup. We've got a really good group of guys. Um, Ty's is leading that way um, in terms of putting us in the right positions. and. Uh, just continue to play off each other. Jordan, congrats on the win. I saw you post on your Instagram story last week. KP Skywalker. Yeah. Local DM. What you know about KP? I'm very familiar with KP. Yeah. Is that a part of the way that you're, you know, ingratiating yourself with the DMV culture and, and the lifestyle? Most definitely. Most definitely. I mean, you gotta, you gotta be fully embraced here. Um, I think something that the, uh, that I've heard is that the fans appreciate that, right? Being a part of the community, be a part of the culture. Um, and that's not just me. That's our entire team. I think that's what we're doing with the organization. And I think you can feel that just with the energy, right? Like we interact with the crowd. We need the crowd. Let's turn them up. Everybody's coming with um, good excitement. They want to see good basketball. But, you know, even even pregame, pregame music, all of that matters. Get us going to the game. Um, local artists, uh, you'll hear a lot, of, a lot of DMV, a lot of DC uh, artists all throughout the year. So uh, it's a good catch. And then from a basketball standpoint, obviously you didn't get off to the start that you wanted to. What kept you dialed in and keeping the shots falling? I'm not stopping. I see. I mean, <laughs> you just got to keep going. Luckily, I'm in a position. I think Cruz also realizes that in order for us to win games, we got to be aggressive. And of course, we want to go out there and make all of our shots, right? But um, that's what makes us so special is that we got the free, the freedom, the green light to be aggressive all game. Um, and I think that's just tough for the defense. With Ty's being out there, being able to facilitate how he does. I mean, I think we would all love to start 10 for 10, 11 11, but we're also good enough players to know that we'll be going at it all game. We'll find ways to get our spots, get our shots, uh, we'll click at the right time. Um, it's 82 games, so obviously every game isn't going to be perfect, but um, you got two dogs, two killers out there with the rest of the um, out of killers on that team, too. So it'll be uh, exciting to watch. Touch on that, just the importance of having the behind you. That kind of the reason for after your one, you know, kind of for sure, for sure. Every time, every time. I think it's just for me personally, it's just natural. Um, just because I'm the type of player that feeds off that energy. Right? You come down, you get an and one, turn the crowd up. They come down, they miss a shot, transition dunk, even more energy. They come down, miss it, transition three timeout. Right? So you got to play through that energy and. It gets our team going, um, especially when we're at home. It's a little bit different on the road just because um, you don't have that support from your fans. So whenever you're here, it's all about embracing every moment that you can, uh, riding that momentum, riding that wave. And, um, it's also entertainment. It's also just basketball, um, fun stuff that you want to see as a fan, as a basketball fan. So um, you got to keep that in mind. For you, I guess, what do you feel or what things that you got to kind of iron out? Everything. I mean, we're just totally working to get to a level that we want to be, and it starts with foundation. Um, so each and every day, we got to find something to get better. I continue to to learn and push ourselves and um, see where this uh, where this canvas goes. Hey Jordan, I asked Kyle about how your chemistry is coming along on the court, and he essentially said it's a work in progress. Yeah. Same, same. Um, Preseason, training camp, we're just really competitive, so we will always be on different teams just to kind of raise the level of competitiveness in the in the facility. Um, 
just good basketball. But now we're playing on the court at the same time, figuring out each other's um, cadence, where they want to be, how he wants his shots, playing with Tyus. Um, kind of like the situation of starting off hot. Like we would love for everything to click early right away in the first two games. That's just not realistic. So we got to give it a couple games, five games, 10 games, 15 games. Right, there's 82 of them. So, uh, we'll continue to work, figure out how to play off each other. And um, once we get going, once we catch our rhythm, I think we'll be really hard to stop. Talk about how special was it to have them here supporting you, essentially, as you started the chapter? Yeah, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> I, shout out, I, I rock with my family. They cool, so it was good to see them. I'll see them later. <laughs> Say it again. My family. <laughs> a lot of people is a whole bunch of people here today. Hmm. I don't even know count. More than five? A little bit more than five. I think some extra people asked for some tickets later on before I can help them. So. Hey, Jason Griffin, how you doing? What's up, bro? Oh, good, bro. A uh, question for you. Notice that you're, with the attention is uh, on you, you have a lot of teammates with open looks or those transitions. Yeah. Those easy looks. How does that know you know, you'll probably get a lot of hockey assists this year? Um. It's more so instilling confidence in my teammates to just continue to play who they like, be who they are. I think we saw a really good description of who Corey can be, who Corey is essentially, being able to unlock his shooting, his off the movement threes, his transition threes. He's so dangerous, right? You got to chase him. You can't go under under the screen with him. Um, so by me being extremely aggressive, Kuz being extremely aggressive, the defense is going to have to help. So we're going to put our teammates in situations where they can just be them. Right, knock down shots, not have to play out of their game. Um, and the more we play together, the more fluent it'll become. But huge game from Corey tonight. We wouldn't win if it wasn't out, wasn't for his uh, first half outing and spacing the floor and knocking down shots. But I've been on him all, all training camp, like, bro, just be aggressive. So if you go out there and you go 0 for 18, that's better than going 0 for 4. Just because they got to chase you, they got to make those reads, right? And we're not playing for game two or game three or game four. We're playing. For game 50, game 67 next year. So uh, it's all the work in progress and um, just instilling confidence each and every night in practice to allow these guys to be who they are. And last one for you, how can you, just, how can you describe that DC energy now that you were officially uh, with his Yeah, I like it. I hear a lot of fans talking like, let's go JP, young kids, um, we're excited. So it was just dope uh, just to feel that energy. Um, kind of been looking forward to it for a while. Actually, because I, I felt the energy being an opponent. Um, but I, I, you can feel that they like basketball. They love basketball. They love the entertainment. And uh, we got some entertainment players. So um, it'll be really exciting. Yeah. Last question. Jordan, you mentioned that you're the type of guy that feeds off the energy. Of the crowd. You yeah. said that before. Is that something, I'm just curious, is that something, is that how you've been since you were a kid? Like going back to elementary Definitely. school with your family in the crowd? Feeding off every, the time, every time. Every um, time. Always just kind of gravitated towards exciting basketball players. Um, but just the freedom, like just the joy of just playing basketball to me personally, um, I've never changed no matter what level I was at. Um, and I've also started to realize that other people gravitate towards that, players, your teammates, um, the fans. So just continuing to just, you know, play my game. It's a, a staple of who I am as a person. It, um, it's pretty cool. When you say when you say you gravitated towards entertainment players, who are some examples? Who are you talking about? AI, D Wade, Kobe, Dame, Steph, Dave Bing, a lot of old guys. History, I know history. I'm not gonna bore y'all with a lot of the throwback players, but Gilbert Arenas, right? Just a lot of guys who were just exciting to watch, exciting to play, who were electric. Um kind of been my place all my entire life. Yeah.